So today we are gonna be starting the first in a set of trees that is completely different here on the farm. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here on Father's Day in 2022. So one of the things you guys know if you're following us here as we put together this newly establishing desert farm is we have been focused on production and production crops here for these first two years. Now that we have most of our fruit tree planting behind us, we're actually gonna be switching gears just a little bit and focusing a little bit more on our livestock and the life that it brings to the farm. So one of the biggest challenges we have here in the desert is our lack of rainfall. Now that seems pretty obvious, but when you're trying to raise crops and livestock, it becomes a challenge with things like what you see behind me here, and that is a lack of pasture. When we're talking about livestock, that's where we need to start really getting creative in how we're gonna supplement some of their feed. Now, what you see behind me here is actually where we will be keeping all of our Thanksgiving turkeys. So we have a pasture that's established for our laying hens and our broilers, but we try to keep that area small, large enough for them to be comfortable but we also don't want to be using a tremendous amount of water that evaporates, especially in the summertime, all around the farm. In fact, we're not allowed to. So we have restrictions here as far as how much water we can use and what we can use it for. So working around those restrictions, we need to come up with a good fodder or food for these other livestock. And that's actually where we're headed today. So we actually already have fodder trees planted here on the farm. Those are actually our mulberries. Now we have mulberries in a few different spots here on the farm and mulberry plants themselves, the leaves, as well as the fruit is a fantastic fodder source for livestock. Both poultry and goats, as well as pigs, will all eat the fruit, they'll eat the leaves, and they'll even eat branches in this, in the instance of goats. The challenge with those trees is they do take a tremendous amount of water, being fruit trees, in order to really be healthy and produce for you. So what we're looking for now is a tree that can be utilized for fodder, however, in the long run, is more desert adapted and won't need as much water input on our part. Now we've grown Moringa before. You'll see this wood here that's actually been growing in this pot, this exact pot for the last two years. And you can see I've actually got pods on here that are starting to ripen up and the tree is doing okay. <laughs> Definitely not thriving. So many advantages to the Moringa tree. I'm not gonna cover those today. We've grown these trees before. We did so on the old farm and we're very successful. The biggest challenge with these trees here in the desert is they do not do well once you get below 30 degrees. In fact, the tree on our old farm, we killed when we hit 20 degrees over successive nights and it completely killed the tree. Now we have plans for that, that we are pretty confident we can get around, but this is the tree we're gonna be utilizing as our primary fodder source for a couple different areas here on the farm. And that's actually what we're gonna be showing you today. So this first area that we're looking at is actually where we were raising our pigs this past season. We have actually planted sorghum into this area as a preparation for the ground in order to establish a pasture this fall while we have our Thanksgiving turkeys on this area. You can see that it's wide open space. There's no shade whatsoever. And that's one of the reasons we're gonna be utilizing Moringa trees on specific placements here. 
we're actually gonna be placing them on both the east and west sides. So here, it might be hard to make out, but I did this flyover in the morning. So to give you an idea of those morning shadows, to give you an idea of where the east is coming from as far as how you're seeing it here on the screen. What you're seeing behind me here is the east side of this pasture area for the turkeys. We're outside of that area, and this is actually where we're gonna be planting the moringa. What we're trying to overcome here and planting these on the outside of the enclosure is giving them shade both in the morning, midday to an extent where they can be underneath the shade, and then also we'll be planting moringa on the west side, on the outside. Now, the reason why we're planting them outside versus inside the enclosure, number one, we, want, we are gonna have some pasture in here, although it'll be kind of sparse, but also turkeys fly <laughs> really well. So not that they can't fly up into these, but we are gonna clip wings so that we don't get too much flight out of them, but we're trying to take away most of what they would probably wanna go after as far as roosting and flying up into the trees. So we're gonna keep the trees just slightly away from the enclosure on both the east and west side to give them plenty of shade. And of course, we have fodder available for those turkeys in this area. This is actually where we're gonna be keeping our ducks and geese, and also we have our goats. Now, this is a little bit more of a unique area. We have our western orchard that's behind this area. As those trees continue to grow, they're gonna automatically shade all of the areas that we have set aside for ducks, goats, and eventually sheep on the western side in the afternoon. The challenge is gonna be this eastern side here, and that's where moringa tree come into play. So to give you an idea, again, of the area, you'll see that we have two separate areas set up for the ducks and where the goats are now. Pretty clear to see the western orchard as well. We have a smaller area here, not quite as large as the turkey area. And because we have the border between the section itself and the vineyard garden, we aren't able to put the trees on the outside. So here we're gonna be a little more creative as far as where the trees are gonna to have to be placed. So what we're thinking here is actually having the trees inside with the animals. Now, the challenge is gonna be goats, but we have some ideas as far as how to keep them away from the tree itself because we don't want them eating the tree down to a nub. But we're not as concerned about the ducks. Now, the ducks obviously do eat greens, but we wanna make sure we're giving them shade. So what we're gonna be doing is setting up these moringa trees throughout the inside corners of each one of the pins that we have set up here and block them off from the animals. Now, what we wanna to do today is we wanna go ahead and get the potted moringa placed in one of the corners just to give us an idea of what this is gonna look like. So this will give us an idea of what this is gonna look like here in the corner. Now, of course, the challenge is gonna be planting. We're here in the middle of June, not an ideal time to plant anything being hot and dry. However, summertime is the best growing season for Moringa. So while we have a few challenges here that we're gonna be up against, we have some ideas as far as what we're gonna be able to do in order to get these trees established here in the summertime. One of the great benefits of Moringa here on the farm is gonna be the fact that we can have a tree that hopefully over time being desert adapted will not require irrigation or at least not a lot of irrigation. Now we're gonna be doing some things with the Moringa that are gonna be outside of the Turkey area, but what we're gonna be doing in both cases is starting to establish soil.
So what you saw me doing there was taking some of our goat manure mixed with some hay, and we're utilizing that as a base layer on top of our desert soil here, and then piling some wood chips on top. We'll be keeping this moist every day to make sure that this begins to break down and starts to give some nutrition into the soil, getting ready to plant these trees. Now, when I say plant these trees, there's two different ways we're gonna try this. So there's a lot of amazing things when it comes to Moringa trees, but one of them is how easy they are to propagate. Now we had shown you the seed pods that we have growing on the tree here on the farm that's in the pot. All you do is bust open those pods and inside those pods are seeds. And that's exactly what you need in order to establish a Moringa tree. So you can see super simple. And in fact, I have some of the very seeds that we took from the old farm and they are now pretty much ready to plant. So now we're gonna try two different things. We know that these trees do best in the middle of summer and into early fall when it's nice and hot, but at the same time, it can't be too dry and hot for a young tree, otherwise it struggles. So we're gonna be trying two different ways of starting out these Moringa trees here over the summer and into the fall. The first one is gonna be in pots. That's pretty straightforward. We'll be dropping these seeds into small pots that once they take, we can go ahead and transplant out onto the farm. The second thing we're gonna do is plant these directly into the soil that we're creating into that little plot that you watched us put together. Between those two methods, the hope is by the time we roll into fall, we'll actually have some trees here established. So we have a completely different direction as far as what we're gonna be doing for these trees how we're gonna be planting them, how we're gonna be designing the irrigation, which will hopefully be temporary, and more importantly, how we're gonna establish these trees long-term so that come a few years from now, we have trees that are desert adapted and won't need any irrigation. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here on this newly establishing farm, but would love to see you on a regular basis. Any questions or comments, please put those in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. <laughs>